to deal with for a few minutes in this session is the issue of contextualization of preaching and what I'm calling a category creation. And this is a concern to me because when I hear talk about contextualizing in a missiological setting or a, a weekly setting for American listeners in your congregation, when I, when I hear talk of contextualization, I, I don't hear much reflection on another necessary way of looking at communication of spiritual things to unspiritual people or immature people or people of a totally different mental framework. I don't hear much talk about, wait a minute, if we're going to be faithful to the gospel, we can't just contextualize. We have to create categories. We can't just adapt to all the categories they already have, some of which are wrong. And we can't assume they have all the necessary categories for grasping spiritual truth in their fallen natural minds. And we know this because of a text like uh, 1 Corinthians 2.14, the natural man, that means a person without the work of the Holy Spirit, the natural man does not uh, receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are folly to him, and he cannot grasp them because they are spiritually discerned. It says he cannot grasp them, which means if we presume to think that we can speak Christian categories, Christian truths, into the mind of a natural person and adapt them to categories that he already has functioning so that he welcomes them, we don't understand fallen human nature. Or 1 Corinthians 1 verse 21, uh, in the wisdom of God, it, it pleased God that people in their wisdom would not know God, and therefore, by the folly of preaching, people are saved. So, the very wisdom of God has ordained it that human wisdom will not grasp the preaching of Christ. Now, I would say human wisdom in that text is what I mean by native categories in your head as an unbeliever. Something has to happen in order for a natural person, the wisdom of man, apart from the Holy Spirit, something has to happen so that their minds will be open to and able to grasp what you're saying. And that's what I'm calling category creation. Now, this is impossible. This is a work of the Spirit, but He uses us to do it, and we should labor in prayer and study in order to try to help people awaken to new categories in their head which can then receive Christian truth. Now, when I'm saying this, I'm not mainly, from, for my purpose, thinking about encountering a tribe, say in Papua New Guinea or in some a distant, out-of-the-way cultural place that has zero contact with uh, Christian history, that is a huge missiological challenge. I'm thinking typical American-bred, self-reliant, self-exalting, self-determining people in my congregation or who happen to come into the congregation and they don't have categories for embracing what I'm teaching. My job is to, by the power of the Spirit, through as much winsomeness and intelligence and compelling language and good argument as I can, help them develop new 
categories. Let me just give you a few examples. I, I think the sovereignty of God over human willing and the fact that human willing will be held accountable at the last day is a paradox that people don't have any categories for, usually. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11, he works all things according to the counsel of his will. And Matthew 12, we will be accountable for every idle word we utter. So, totally sovereign over all that we do and think and feel, we are accountable. That's a category that has to be given. They have to develop a category that says, okay, that is not schizophrenia, that's not double talk, that's not gibberish, that is true, biblical. God is sovereign over all our choices and we are accountable for those choices. Here's, a, here's another one. God's sovereign decree of what will be is often different than his command of what should be. That's a category people don't have usually. And I'm thinking Exodus 20, thou shalt not murder. That's a command. That's God's will, his revealed will. And then you have Isaiah 53:10. It was the will of the Lord to bruise him. In other words, God ordained that his son be murdered by Pilate and the soldiers and the crowds. That's a category most people don't have. Or consider the paradox that most people don't have a place for in their minds that God's willing that sin be is not the same as sinning. That's almost the same as number two, but not quite. Remember Genesis 50, verse 20, where Joseph is saying to his brothers, you meant it for evil when they sold him into slavery, which was a sin. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. It doesn't say God used it for good. It says God meant, same idea. You meant, God meant. You meant evil, God meant it, that evil, for good. But in meaning that evil for good, he did not commit evil. That's a category that many people do not have, a category that needs to be created by prayer and by teaching. Here's another one. God is passionately, or Jesus is passionately concerned that his glory be exalted, which sounds to a lot of people like egomaniac, like... Um, Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 5, he prays to the Father, Jesus prays to the Father, Father, restore to me the glory that I had with you before the foundation of the world. I want to retain or attain back into the fullness of my glory. And then in verse 24, I think, of that same prayer, he says, Father, my desire is that those whom you have given me would be with me where I am to see my glory. Because his passion to be glorified is in fact at the heart of what it means to love us. And most people don't have a category for a self-exalting Savior whose self-exaltation is at the heart of what it means to love people. One last illustration. Walk by the Spirit. I mean, just think of it. Walk by the Spirit. Do you have a category for that? Do you even know what that means? Do, do, does the average person off the street have any idea what that involves? You do the walking, but it's not you, it's the Holy Spirit. Walk 
by the Spirit. There's a category that many young Christians take a long time to develop. So, in conclusion, I just want to encourage you that alongside contextualization, and oh, believe me, contextualization is essential because if you don't have some common ground with, to talk to people, you can't even make any headway in category creation. But be sure that you don't think that taking people where they are, they can be given the whole counsel of God that is essential with the categories they already have. If you insist that people can already, by the way their brains are wired as fallen people, grasp what the gospel is, you will almost for sure distort the gospel to get it into their heads. We must do both, not either or, both and contextualization and category creation.